We are getting back into the word. And this topic, man, is spreading like wildfire. Jesus did not die for your sins. Yes, I am excited. I am because I actually been fighting all these witches, okay? Christianity is witchcraft, okay? Now, don't run. Don't run. I'm going to show you scripture backing up what I just said, okay? And I've been fighting all day. And I'm going to show you what I mean by Christianity is witchcraft. Now, if I was to go to my Bible app, and you go to your Bible app, if you type in witchcraft, it's only in the Bible seven times. The first time witchcraft is mentioned is with your boy Saul, King Saul, the witch killer, okay, who converted to the witches, all right? The first time is used is amazingly with the type and shadow of Paul, B.K.A. Saul, King Saul. Now, the next time is mentioned, it is with Jezebel, okay? And I want y'all to get that scripture real quick in the book of Revelation chapter 2 because my God is funny, okay? And he disses, okay, this false apostle, okay, by calling him Jezebel. And remember, Jael was a tent peg killer and the apostle Paul followed in her footsteps he is the tent peg killer okay get it jail paul was a jailer <laughs> he was killing people with the cross in the temples because temples are churches and jail she crept softly up on sisera and she used the tent peg and she drove it through his temples get it temples churches okay so the god's word Speaks on many different ways, okay? Who's at that chapter and can tell me what scripture I need to go to in Revelations chapter 2? I want you to start at the commandment that was given not to eat food sacrificed to idols. This is the book of Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Right there. Now, who is the notorious, the murderer of Jesus on biblical record who taught us that we could eat food sacrificed to idols? What's his name? Paul. Paul. Your boy, Paul. I love saying it that way. Your boy, Paul. He said, an idol is nothing. An idol is nothing. I ain't got time to go through that scripture. Look it up for yourself. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, I believe. Okay, and it's also in Romans. Okay, he the one that told us that we can eat food sacrificed to idols. Okay. The only big deal is not offending your brother. If someone is weak in the faith, then you ain't supposed to eat food sacrificed to idols in front of them. So going back to what Jesus said, remember, Paul said it's okay. Okay? As long as you have faith and you don't offend your brother. Jesus said you cannot eat food sacrificed unto idols. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block. Okay, stumbling block. The Apostle Paul talks about stumbling blocks more than anybody. Okay, now let's keep going. Before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And he taught us that we can eat food sacrificed to idols. Go to verse 20. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, 
to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. The Apostle Paul is the only apostle on biblical record who taught us that we can eat food sacrificed to idols. I'm telling you, man, the Most High is funny. He's referring to him as Jezebel. Just like if you type in witchcraft, the first thing that comes up is your boy Saul. Then it goes right to Jezebel. Now I want you to get that scripture in the same chapter where he talks about praising a certain apostle. And he says, you know what? I had an apostle who came and you know what? He taught about marriage and he did all these things. He gives a validation letter. You're right. <laughs> he didn't give no validation letter on your boy Paul. Okay, this is going to be verse two. He said nothing about this guy. This is what Jesus said. Let's get that. Verse two. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars. And has found them liars. So he said nothing about Paul. He just said, look. There's some false apostles. Now go to verse 1 so we'll know more in detail this is going into Paul. Let's get that. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus right. That's all I need. He was speaking to his church in Ephesus. Paul was in Ephesus. Paul was the self-proclaimed apostle. I challenge you to show me a scripture where anybody else calls Paul an apostle but himself he is a self-proclaimed apostle now i want to keep going i want to keep going into where i was at because i was just setting the stage okay the apostle paul is the founder of the christian church and he is the type and chateau okay of i would like to say king saul even though King Saul is a type and shadow of him. So going back to where I was at, when you type in witchcraft in your Bible app, the first person is going to bring up is your boy Saul. Then it's going to go to Jezebel. All right. Which is another name that Jesus confronted Paul with. Not only that, if you type in witchcraft, Manasseh is going to pop up and he is a wicked king now the other times witchcraft pop up God is speaking to the children of Israel okay and then guess who is the last person witchcraft pops up on your boy apostle self-proclaimed apostate imposter Paul okay BKA King Saul so that tells you, I'm telling you, Christianity is witchcraft. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going on that. I want somebody to get 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 3. Because we're going to talk about Saul and witches. Let's get that. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 28, verse 3. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lamented him, and buried him in Ramah, even his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. So Saul was against witches at one time. Let's remember that. Saul was against witches at one time. Just like Paul was against Christians at one time. Now I want you to go to verse 6. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim nor by prophets. God did not speak to him even by the Urim and the Thummim. Okay? According to the Bible, God sent an evil spirit on Saul. And this is how wicked Saul was. That the only person that could come and get the devil off of him was your boy David. Now, I'm going to tell you something I learned, okay? Now, I found the truth of Islam from the Bible, okay? And 
I learned that the type and shadow of David is Mohammed. Peace and blessings be upon him. Now, I learned that there's a lot of Christians, okay, being oppressed by the devil. And you know what they do? They turn to the Quran and they play the Quran and start crying and make a video talking about they feel better. They go to hear the Quran on YouTube and start crying and feel better and do a little message. And some of them end up reverting and some of them stay in La La Land. Okay, so that is so amazing. This man was oppressed by a devil and here he has his boy David coming to help him. And what did he do to David when David was playing and the devil was leaving him? You know what this guy would do? He would take his javelin, he would take his spear, okay, and he would try to kill King David with it. But he was unsuccessful. That just tells you how wicked this man was. All right. So now we want to go into verse seven. But we understand that God quit talking to him. OK, matter of fact, he sent an evil spirit upon him. Let's go to verse seven. Then said Saul to his servants, seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, behold. There is a woman that hath a familiar spirit at Endor. All right, so now he trying to hook up with the witches. Just like your boy Paul. After he was locking up the Christians, killing the Christians, and we're going to get that in the scripture. So you'll know these are not my words. A lot of people on YouTube are famous with quoting their own words. OK, they love speaking their own words more than the scriptures. So I'm going to show you in scripture that Saul was consenting Christians to their death. OK, so now he needs help from the witches, just like Paul needed help from the Christians. Now I want you to go to verse 10. And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, as the Lord liveth. There shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Now, a lot of you people, your, your brain is a little slow and you're not picking up on what just happened right here. This man literally just said, you know what? I'm not going to kill you. You a witch, I'm not going to kill you. That is totally against God's word. God's word says you are not supposed to suffer a witch to live. Let's get that. That is in the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 18. It's on the screen for time's sake. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 22, verse 18. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Perfect. You are not supposed to allow a witch to live. That's God Almighty. God wrote that with his own finger. And hear your boy Saul, because he is the God of the Christian church. He is the founder of the Christian church. He is the Jesus of the Christian church. All these churches with Jesus' name on them, they don't belong to him. They pause. They pause. Paul wrote letters, okay, in the king's name, okay? And he seized on the inheritance. And the apostle Paul, I teach, He's been using Jesus as an armor bearer. He's been using him like a shield. He's been using him like a bulletproof vest. He's hiding behind Jesus, talking about Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. But really, he is the Lord of the Christian church. Okay? Because God spoke through Jesus. And Jesus said, my father's house. This is my father's house. Thine will be done. Thine kingdom come. Thine will be done. So Jesus exalted God as king. The apostle Paul used Jesus. Now, I want to get to where I was going. I want to get back to where we was at. And I want to go to verse 9 and then go to verse 10 again. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 28 verse 9. And the woman said unto him, 
Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits, and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? Okay, so Saul, man, he get peas. He get peas right there. He once was killing the witches. Just like Saul of the New Testament. He get peas. He once was killing the Christians. But something happened. He got weak. He got weak. And here we have King Saul. They both from Benjamin. They both symbol as the wolf. And here he is going to the witch. And he's saying, look, I'm going to read it. Verse 10. And Saul swore to her by the Lord, saying, as the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Just listen to that hypocrisy. He said, as the Lord lives, nothing's going to happen to you, even though the Bible says, don't suffer a witch to live. This is hypocrisy at its fullness, okay? So Saul, both of the Sauls, is all about killing the righteous and letting the wicked go free. Remember, King Saul had a commander in his army. He had an Edomite, okay? King Saul was told to kill off all the Edomites, and he spared them. However, he killed 85 priests of his own people of note. And he killed David's reputation because he was trying to kill King David over 26 times, okay? So... Saul was all about killing the righteous and letting the wicked go free, just like King Saul right now. He is allowing this witch to live, okay? And if you continue reading the story, she sweet-talked him. He was not going to eat, and she was like, eat something, eat something, eat something. And he eventually ate something. I mean, dang, okay? So now we want to go to your boy, Saul, this is going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 1. I want someone to get that because I'm going to go over something else. And when it's time, I want you to pull that. Since we're talking about justifying the wicked and letting the righteous go free, I want to read Exodus 23, 7. Keep thee far from a false matter. And the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. Okay, the apostle Paul was a murderer. He murdered Jesus. That's why we have the type and shadow of Jesus, which was Stephen. He was having a visitation from the Lord and Saul was consenting to his death. Okay, now he is all about letting the innocent die or be killed. He's all about killing the righteous and letting the wicked go free. That is seen in the story of Barabbas. In Mark chapter 15, verse 7, and there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them that made haste insurrection with him, who had committed murder in the insurrection. So, Barabbas was a murderer, okay? He's a type and shadow of Paul. Go into verse 11. But the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. So Pilate said, look, I got Jesus, who y'all call king of the Jews, and I got Barabbas. Which one y'all want to go free? And they let Barabbas go free. Why? Because this is a type and shadow of Saul's ministry. His ministry is all about letting wicked people live forever, okay, and killing the righteous. He is against obedience. He's all about sacrifice, okay, just like his forefather, King Saul, was all about sacrificing. He was sacrificing on a battlefield and wasn't even a priest, okay. He thought obeying God was making sacrifices of all the choice animals. When God told him to kill everything that was breathing, okay, 
He is the minister of sacrifice, just like your boy Paul is the minister of sacrifice. Now, I'm going to get verse 11. Again, but the chief priest moved the people that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. So the Israelites as a whole was caught up in this sin, justifying the wicked and letting the righteous go free. So now we're going to get Acts chapter 9, verse 1. This is the book of Acts chapter 9, verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. All right, so he was breathing out slaughter. I told you I was going to show you the scripture. And he was threatening the disciples. Okay, now I want you to get Acts chapter 8, verse 1. This is the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1. And Saul consenting unto his death, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Okay, so here Saul was consenting to Stephen's death. Oh, that touches my heart, okay? Because when we look at Acts chapter 8 verse 1, I want y'all to go there. Because this right here, I'm telling you, it touches my soul. This was a picture of Jesus being killed on biblical record by the murderer, the apostle Paul. Okay? If your gospel is not touching others, it's because it has not touched you. And I get excited. When I go to verse 2, it says... And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Now, I had a song, and I literally talked about this in the song, and it literally is going into only devout men could carry Stephen. Only devout men could carry Stephen. Now, those devout men is going into the angels. That carried Jesus alive into heaven. Because Stephen was just murdered physically. But he is a type and shadow of Jesus Christ. Peace be upon him. Who was murdered on biblical record. And the Bible says devout men carried Stephen. Righteous men. Why? Because they were angels who took Jesus alive into heaven and while this all was going on Saul was making havoc of the church entering into every house and hailing men and women committing them to prison that's why I call the apostle Paul jail he was the jailer so now we heard about what he was doing to the church now let's hear about him getting weak just like your boy Saul got weak this is going to be Galatians chapter 1, verse 23. This is the book of Galatians chapter 1, verse 23. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in times past now preacheth the faith which once he destroyed. And they glorified God in me. Okay, so the people was like, dang, this is the dude that was killing the church. That was locking up the church. And now... This guy is preaching the gospel? Okay, now I'm going to show you a scripture where the apostles, okay, the disciples, they were afraid of Paul, okay? This is going to be in the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 26. This is the book of Acts, chapter 9, verse 26. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. They was right. They were like, this nigga now preaching? All of a sudden he was killing the church. Now he got the Holy Ghost? How that work? That just, man, I'm telling you. Jesus being crucified on the cross is stupid as hell. I tried my best to go back through these scriptures 
and read commentaries on people explaining how Jesus died for our sins. And it is so stupid. It is a power coming from witchcraft to make you believe that God killed his son for your bad ass. That don't even make no sense, okay? The Bible tells you that every man is going to be accountable for his own sins, that every man is going to die for his own sins. But with your boy Paul, he's teaching all men are justified by Jesus Christ's death. Now, amazing. If Jesus died for everybody's sins, why is there a hell? And how come he was only dead three days? This stuff is stupid as hell. I'm sorry. I know it's hurting your feelings if you're online. But you know what? Open rebuke is better than secret love. If you musty, somebody just got to tell you, you musty. I'm not going to sit up here and play with your feelings. That stuff is stupid as hell if you actually go back and try to reprocess it. Islam came on the scene with the truth. I know you hate them, okay? But they said, looky here. Jesus was not crucified and he was not killed. We only made it look like that. <laughs> it only appeared to them that way. And then it says, and they certainly did not kill him. Okay? So somebody was in my comments and he was like, yeah, yeah, Jesus died for our sins. And I said, you know what? Okay, I'll believe that if you can tell me this. I said, tell me who carried Jesus cross. And then he gets back on moments later and he's like, well, um, Simon the Cyrene carried his cross when Jesus couldn't carry it no more. I said, show me that in the Bible. Show me that in the Bible because I know it's not in the Bible. And he didn't say anything else about it no more. Okay. Because the Bible literally tells you in the book of John that Jesus carried his own cross. But all the other gospel accounts say a black man, Simon the Cyrene, carried Jesus' cross. And amazingly, out of all the black presence that is in the Bible, when you watch the movie, they didn't want to find an old dusty black man carrying Jesus' cross, man. This stuff is crazy, man. So the gospel of John, Jesus carries the cross all by himself. But the other ones say Simon carried it. They both can't be true. They both can't be true. So I asked them, show me that scripture where it says, and Jesus could not carry the cross no more. So Simon the Cyrene stepped in and started carrying the cross. That is a bunch of baloney. That's what you call baloney. So then I asked him another question. I was like, okay, okay. Tell me this then. Tell me this. And you got me. When Jesus died on the cross, did the temple tear before he died or after he died? And he has not yet responded to that. He's talking about everything else, okay? He's giving me those John bullets. Oh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made flesh, and the flesh was God, and all these precepts in the word was God. And he's given me all this John garbage. Okay. And he's avoiding the real questions. Because in the Bible. There is one Bible account. That say the temple was torn. Before he died. And there's another Bible account. That says the temple was torn. After he died. Which one is it? Because you know what? The story is shaky. But the Ishmaelites, they are firm. They like, you know what? They did not crucify him or kill him. They ain't shaky with it. It ain't three or four different stories. It's the same boldness. He was not killed nor crucified. Now, I still have a whole lot to go. I still have a whole lot to go, but I just want to talk to you for a minute. There is not one scripture in the entirety of the Old Testament that says Christ is going to die for your sins according to the scriptures, just like Paul says it. So let's get that scripture because Paul was very bold when he said that. And I know for a fact it's going to be 
1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 3 and 4 I will get that that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures I'm looking for those scriptures I'm looking for a scripture in the Old Testament where it says Christ is going to die for your sins okay now the Bible talks about Cyrus the Bible talks about Cyrus being anointed Okay, that's the same word as Christ. God knows how to mention people's names. He mentioned Josiah's name 350 years before he was born. I'm still looking for a scripture besides Isaiah 53. Okay, because the Jewish community don't even accept that as Jesus. They know that Israel was the servant of God. Okay, and a lot of people believe that Isaiah was speaking of Israel and that he was speaking of himself. Okay, so that's very vague. I want a scripture in the Old Testament where it says Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Also, it says and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Those are the scriptures I'm looking for, Paul. I'm looking for those sets of scriptures. I do not see any scripture in the Old Testament with Jesus name on it. Jesus is not mentioned by name in the Old Testament at all. OK, so my word to you Christians is you're going to appear before the judgment seat of the almighty God. And you're not going to have one scripture with his signature on it saying that I sent Christ to die for my sins. All you got is your boy John and your boy Paul. And we got the letters of Paul before we got the letters of the Gospels. And the letters that came from the Gospels are all authors that are anonymous. They wasn't eyewitnesses. So you are literally in a bad predicament. Okay? You are in a hot seat if you literally think you're going to come to Almighty God with a scripture from John. When the Old Testament, preferably the first five books of Moses, was written with God's very own finger. You can't find me one scripture in the Torah where it says the Messiah is going to die for your sins. But yet you killing everybody with that tent peg. You murdering everybody with that cross and you don't even have nothing from the Old Testament. All you have is the joy John. All you have is the John. OK, you ain't got nothing else besides the wolf in sheep clothing who's been exposed. And that's your boy, Paul. OK, you ain't got nothing else to hang on. Nothing else to hang on. I encourage you to repent. I encourage. I encourage you to repent bitterly, bitterly, okay, and seek the truth, okay? Now it's time for us to do what we always do. I mean, we about to get in the word. I don't know if anybody want to be with me tonight. I mean, it's a little late, you know. Who with me? Y'all with me? Yes. yes. 